everybody so I try to do the where you make a um, a chat uh, a chat room but I'm not sure how that all goes so I just thought um I'm going to just go live and read it on here with you guys <clears throat> maybe this way is better so this one is lame Deer seeker visions it's one of my favorite books John fire lame Deer. You guys want to hear a chapter stay on our thank you for checking in I was all alone on the hilltop I sat there in the vision pit a hole dug into the ground into the hill my arms hugging my knees as I watched old man chest the medicine man who had brought me there disappeared far down in the valley he was just moving black dot among the pines and soon he was gone altogether now I was all by myself left on the hilltop for four days and nights without food or water until he came back for me. You know, we Indians are not like some white folks. A man and a wife, two children, and one babysitter who watches a TV set while the parents are out visiting somewhere. Indian children are never alone. They are always surrounded by grandparents, uncles, cousins, relatives of all kinds who sing to them, tell them stories. If the parents go someplace, the kids go along. But here I was, crouched in my vision pit, left alone by myself for the first time in my life. I was 16 then, still had my boy's name, and let me tell you, I was scared. Hold on, let me Let me tell you, I was scared. Now I lost my place. I was shivering, and not only from the cold, the nearest human being was miles away. Four days and nights is a long, long time. Of course, when it was all over, I would no longer be a boy, but a man. I would have had my vision I would be given a man's name. Sioux men are not afraid to endure hunger, thirst, and loneliness. And I was only 96 hours away from being a man. The thought was comforting. Comforting too was the warmth of the star blanket which old man chest had wrapped around me to cover my nakedness. My grandmother had made it especially for this. My first hemblecha, my first vision seeking. It was beautifully designed quilt white with a large morning star made of many pieces of brightly colored cloth that star was so big, it covered the most of the blanket. If Wonka Tonka, the Great Spirit, 
would give me the vision and the power, I would become a medicine man and perform many ceremonies wrapped in that quilt. I am an old man now and many times a grandfather, but I still have that star blanket my grandmother made for me. I treasure it. Someday I shall be buried in it. The medicine man had also left a peace pipe with me together with a bag our kind of tobacco made of wet, red willow bark. The pipe was even more of a friend to me than my star blanket. To us, the pipe is like an open Bible. White people need a church house, a preacher, a pipe organ to get into a praying mood. There are so many things to distract you. Who else is in the church? Whether the other people notice that you have come, the pictures on the wall, the sermon, how much money you should give, and did you bring it with you? We think you can't have a vision that way. For us Indians, there is just a pipe. The earth we sit on, and the open sky. The spirit is everywhere. Sometimes it shows itself through an animal, a bird, or some trees and hills. Sometimes it speaks from the badlands, a stone, or even from the water. The smoke from the peace pipe, it goes straight up to the spirit world. But this is a two-way thing. Power flows to us through the smoke, through the pipe stem. You feel that power as you hold your pipe. It moves from the pipe right into your body. It makes your hair stand up. That pipe is not just a thing, it is a life. Smoking this would make me feel good and help me get rid of my fears. As I ran my fingers along its bold, smooth red pipe, red like the blood of my people, I no longer felt scared. The pipe had belonged to my father and to his father before him. It would someday pass to my son and through him to my grandchildren. As long as we had the pipe, there would be a Sioux Nation. Felt, as I felt its smoothness that came from long use, I sensed that my forefathers who had once smoked this pipe were with me on the hill, right in the vision pit. I was no longer alone. Besides the medicine man had also given me reward. Sorry. In it were 40 small squares of flesh which my grandmother had cut from her arm with a razor blade. I had seen her do it Blood had been streaming down from her shoulder to her elbow as she carefully put down each piece of skin on a handkerchief, anxious not to lose a single one. It would have made those anthropologists mad. Imagine performing such an ancient ceremony with a razor blade instead of a flint knife. To me, it didn't matter. Someone dear to me had undergone pain, giving me something of herself, part of her body, to help me pray and make me strong-hearted. 
How could I be afraid with so many people living and dead helping me? One thing still worried me. I wanted to become a medicine man, a Uwipi, a healer carrying the ancient ways of a city nation. But you cannot learn to be a medicine man like a white man going to medical school. An old holy man can teach you about herbs and the right way to, per to perform a ceremony where everything must be in its proper place. Where every move, every word has its own special meaning. These things you can learn like spelling, like training a horse, but by themselves, these things mean nothing. Without the vision and the power, this learning will no long will do no good. It would not make me a medicine man. What if I failed? If I fail if I had no vision? Or if I dreamed of thunder beings or lightning struck on the hill, that would make me at once into a hyoka, a contrary wise and upside down man, a clown. You know, if you get the power, my uncle Tress had told me, if you are not given it, you won't lie about it. You won't pretend that would kill you or kill somebody close to you, somebody you love. Night was coming on. I was still lightheaded and dizzy from the first sweat bath in which I had purified myself before going up on the hill. I had never been in a sweat lodge before. I had sat in the hill beehive shaped hut made of bent willow branches and covered with blankets to keep the heat in. Old Chest and three other, other medicine men had been in the lodge with me. I had my back against the wall edging as far away as I could from the red hot stones glowing in the center. As chest poured water over the rocks, hissing white steam enveloped me and filled my lungs. I thought the heat would kill me, burn the eyelids off my face. But right in the middle of all of the swirling steam, I heard chest singing. So it couldn't be all that bad. I did not cry out all my relatives which would have made him open the flap of the sweat lodge to let in some cool air. I was proud of this. I heard him praying for me. Oh, holy rocks, we receive your white breath, the steam, it is breath of life. Let this young boy inhale it, make him strong. The sweat bath had prepared me for my vision seeking. Even now, an hour later, my skin still tingled, but it seemed to have made my brains empty. Maybe that was good. Plenty of room for new insights. So this is um, Name Their Sacred Visions. For whoever is watching, that is chapter one. Well, only like two pages of chapter one. I wanted to read you guys some of that because this is really, um, I think this is really a good read right now, you know, because there's a lot of people that are scared and a lot of people that need some type of um, belief and faith because I feel like a lot of people are losing their faith. So, this is a really good book to read. I think it's on Amazon. 
is a for is um you can get it on Amazon. But you guys don't be scared. Alright. Dokcha.